You're about to enter golfing country, your passport to the world's best golfing destinations, hosted by Mark Stewart and Rebecca Blackwell. Golf is our specialty and travel is our business. Let's get ready to tee it up on golfing country. That's right. On our recent media trip to Ireland, we arrived at the Dublin airport, being greeted by clubs to hire with our two sets of golf clubs for our golfing tour. Tourism Ireland transferred us to the quaint and beautiful heritage village of Malahide, only a few miles from Dublin Airport and City Centre Dublin. Our hotel was the Grand Hotel in Malahide. It sits right in the heart of this scenic town, with coastal walkways, a gorgeous marina, and a downtown offering many shops and restaurants. The Grand Hotel is a four-star property, and it's the place to stay in in Malahide. It's walking distance to the Malahide Castle. The Malahide Castle has 250 acres of parkland and gardens. And while you're touring, look out for five ghosts reportedly still sighted at this castle. Our dinners in this media tour were so delicious. The first evening of fine dining was at the Greedy Goose, a very short walk from the Grand Hotel. If you want an historic country experience away from the city center of Dublin, Malahide has it. It would be more or less a hotel. It was called many different names. It was the Country Club up to 1995, when then um, Mark McCormick of IMG uh, developed the course and then he got involved the, with the then owners of the hotel and they all became one company. Mm -hmm. uh, so they developed, they extended, that's the 1996 wing. And then the other wing that was added on by another owner was the 2006. Any idea how far it is? Yes, it's 260 meters, so add on the 26, about 286 yards. Even though the, the new design by Bernhard Langer, which opened in 1995, it is very, very traditional, very sandy. I think one of the quotes when it opened originally was that this is how St. Andrews would have looked after the first sod of turf had been turned. So that's a great compliment to us. As, as you can see, it's, it's a typical Lynx golf course. Well, I don't think it's typical. I think it's exceptional. Maintained excellently from tea to green. And the wind that comes off the sea can definitely throw another dimension into the game. As we work our way to the 18th hole, we've had a great day of golf with good weather, good friends, and a closing at Jameson's Bar first bar that you go into, the panel bar, you'll see two portraits over the fireplace. That's John Jemison and his wife Elizabeth. Also when you go out to through the garden and on your way to the golf shop, you will see a plaque, Lux Amor Pax, Light, Love and Peace. Hello, my name is Damien Keenan from Matthews Coach Hire. We are based in Enniskeen in County Monaghan. Uh, which is Patrick Cavanagh's country. We specialise in golf tours um, as well as regular tours all around the Ireland, north, south, east and west. All our drivers are fully trained and we have a state-of-the-art fleet. All our fleet uh, are fully equipped with Wi-Fi. Um, we specialise in a lot of golf tours around Ireland and we deal a lot with American clients. And today we are taking a group of American golfers uh, to the beautiful Port Marnock, um, which is five minutes here from the beautiful Malahide in County Dublin. We're not straight out, straight back like in St Andrews. Um, you go out and around, and then the ninth green, so the first tee is over here, the other side of the clubhouse, and the ninth green is just over this mound, and then the tent goes back out and around again, so uh, the two nines come back in on the, uh, onto the clubhouse. Figure eight. Figure eight. So um, basically your, your fifth, your fourth and fifth holes are the furthest point in the front nine, and your 14, 15 are the furthest point in the back nine. You come back around to the ninth, we don't have any toilets out in the course, 
So if you want, uh, after nine holes, you can come back into the clubhouse. I have a question on the tees to play because I looked at the card and saw that the yardages were pretty long. Now, does that be? Does the ball run that much that that green should not be? If you're a 10 handicap or below, you should play it from one back, or is green the preferred uh, distance? Okay, today there isn't much wind, and the ball is running a fair distance. So um, I would say white markers would be fair, but um, we're a Lynx golf course. The rough is penal. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you want to enjoy it a little bit more, you can just move forward to the greens. But both options are open. Ah, oh, what a day. And what a course. In fact, this is the number one course in Ireland. And I got to see the work that goes into those revetted bunkers. Every aspect of golf is special here at Port Marnock. And if you love a challenging day of golf, you'll find it right here. In fact, the finest players in the world love to play golf here at Port Marnock. Approach shots aren't just putting the ball on the green, but putting the ball in the right place on the green. Our golfing day ends with respect for the great game of golf. And we leave with a promise to play this great course again. But that doesn't end our day. We're greeted with more Irish hospitality from the movers and shakers of Port Marnock. Myself. What do you, you made them yourself? Absolutely. Don't you know? <laughs> Can't you tell? We're very appreciative that you, you've, you've come here today to play the course. Uh, as Jerry mentioned, uh, we have done some improvements in the course over the last few years. We're uh, very appreciative of the work of our uh, legal superintendent, Gary Johnson, a uh, man from Carnoustie, and the staff. They've done great work uh, in uh, enhancing the course. So. Uh, we've moved back to number one in Ireland in the Golf Digest Ireland ratings, so we're, we're very pleased with that. And uh, we have good ratings internationally. I know Jerry and the marketing subcommittee do great work for us. We're, we're working on getting the international raters to uh, appreciate the high quality of the course. So The history is all around you here. Uh, last year we, we had a, uh, an evening here uh, for the 100th anniversary of Harry Bradshaw's birth. Uh, uh, and Harry, uh, you know, was here. I mean, <laughs> in fact, when I joined here, uh, he was he he was he was the pro. And uh, and uh, if, you know, we're 120 years old for one third of that time. Harry Bradshaw and and Port Marnock were connected. So when it came to the, uh, his anniversary uh, of his birth, we obviously wanted to put on a big occasion, which we did. And um, we uh, televised the match that was played here, Casper versus Bradshaw, uh, which of course Harry Bradshaw won. Damien got us safe and sound to Art Glass, about an hour from Belfast Airport, about two hours from Dublin. Art Glass is steeped in history well known for its abundant fishing along the Irish Sea. Today it's known for its championship golf and its welcoming Irish hospitality. Today the roar of the cannons are silent, but golfers from around the world are praising the links of art glass. With picturesque settings right along the sea, you'll want to make sure you have your camera with you on this course. On the practice green, you see lots of youngsters practicing the game that Ireland loves. Watching them for just a few minutes, you see their dedication and perseverance. Maybe it's because of the man that lives just down the road. Here at Art Glass, the upstairs bar and lounge are a charming area, and these seats give you an excellent view of the first fairway and tee box. First hole is a par four, 
slight dog leg to the left, but don't go too far left. In fact, there's a saying here in Ardglass, why go left when you've got the whole of Ireland to your right? That saying is for the first five holes here at Ardglass. You'll find them as wild and woolly as any you'll find in Ireland. After the fifth hole, the environment changes, but you will still need to execute good shots and you will always have panoramic views. Your golfing experience at Ardglass will leave you with a feeling for Irish golf that won't leave you. You will experience a great course, warm Irish hospitality, and respect for the game that we all love. What a treat! Our next stop was the Sleeve Donard, a Hastings hotel. Very prestigious, as one of the best Irish hotels. Good morning, everyone. This is Matt Ward. I'm at the Island Golf Club, just outside of Dublin. It's a beautiful day here in Ireland, probably about 70 degrees. It's going to be light wind blowing. I sound like the Weather Channel, but it is a beautiful day to be playing golf. You should be here, but more importantly, I'm here, and I'm going to be enjoying it in a few minutes with some great people. My name is Declan. I am the starter and the ranger in the Island Golf Club, and I'd like to welcome all our American guests here today. It's uh, one of the oldest links in Ireland, one of the highest rated links, Alien Holes. We recently held the British Open qualifiers, and we just yesterday finalised one of the national competitions, the Interpros. Um, you'll find it a very long course, hard course, but very fair, and I hope you all enjoy your stay here at the island. Again, I'm on the third hole right now of the Island Club. The water is off to my immediate left, camera right, and behind me is the green here at the third, which is rated one of the top two holes at the Island Club. As I said when we teed off, it's a beautiful day. I wish you were here, but I've got to get back to my second shot right now. See you in a few minutes. Come the closest to Malahide and the estuary that separates it. From the Grand Hotel, you can see where the clubhouse used to be. From 1890 to 1973, golfers from Malahide had to get to the course by boat. our time here at the island. This is the last hole, the finale, a par four finishing hole. As you can see, the clubhouse is behind me. The flags are blowing. It's been a marvelous day with marvelous company. Make sure when you're here, you come to the island. Having got my own golf course today, after years, I first of all aimed since uh, 1958, I thought of doing a golf course of my own. When I read about Jimmy DeMarie and Jack Burke doing the Champions Club down in Texas, and as a child I said, my God, a golf course of your own, and call it the Champions Club. You know, it wasn't just the golf club, it was the, the Champions Club. So the seed was set to have a golf place of my own. And uh, I, I nearly went bankrupt twice trying to do one in Sligo once, which turned out to be a lake when it rained. 
And then I went to a place, I bought a castle in Leitrim. These are inside stories. Yeah, there. yeah, well, it's in the book, by the book. Oh, well. <laughs> I want to. I like walking out down the street, see how the shops are doing as well. But basically, I loved just uh, the image of... Um, working on the European for the rest of my days and uh, I don't think anyone since Donald Ross at Pinehurst has had the opportunity to stay with a project so long. I'm 20 years at it now, that one. And uh, I enjoy thinking that I'm not making mistakes all the time. Some of the things I'm doing are making it better. Well now, better is kind of an understatement for this world-renowned course. Designed by one of the true treasures of golf, Pat Ruddy. The European Club was founded in 1987 and opened in 1992. Continuously rated as one of the top courses in Ireland and recognized as one of the best courses in the world, with many of its holes being designated as best holes in the world. See Pat Reddy's personality in the course? I really do. He puts a lot of deception in the course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> Pat Reddy says when you come to Ireland, you become a member of the family. Even though the European club is his baby, you can see his handiwork throughout Ireland. At the Glacidi course at Ballyliffin, Port Salon, Druid's Glen, Rossapenna, and Donegal Merva. But the European Club is Pat's destiny. It's a living, breathing entity that's cared for, nourished, and loved, much like the father of a prince who teaches the lessons of a king. I feel very fortunate to know the keen wit, sharp tongue of the journalist, writer, entrepreneur, and golf course designer. A good man with a warm personality and always has a story to tell. <laughs> Thank you, Pat, for giving us a wonderful slice of Ireland, and I look forward to seeing you next time as the sun goes down on the 12th hole. Slattery, Head of Marketing for the Shannon Group and welcome to Shannon Airport, Gateway to the Wild Atlantic Way in Ireland. Shannon is served by Delta Airlines, United, Aer Lingus, uh, Air Transat from Canada and of course US Airways. You fly into Shannon Airport, you're going to be coming into the heart of our pioneering spirit. Shannon was the very, very first duty-free in the world. Here is where it all started. It's also home to the Irish coffee. And Irish coffee was invented on a very cold night when the passengers came in and uh, the chef wanted to give them something new and different but warming. So he put a little whiskey in the coffee and topped it off with cream. Where else would you get that but here, the very home of it? County Clare is home to the traditional Irish music, so you can get the very best of Irish music, song and dance. Limerick City, a signature city for the Wild Atlantic Way, is actually the city of culture this year. So museums, art, entertainment, and then of course you have all the Atlantic coast. And yesterday I just spent the day at the Cliffs of Moher. Beauty is just amazing, and that's good coming from an Irish person myself. I really had a superb day. Or else you can go to, to Loop Head, which is the closest point to the USA from Shannon and we have an amazing lighthouse. But you're getting into the heart of Irish culture, Irish people, and you see what life is really like here. Shannon is so easy. It's easy to park. You've only, the car rental parks are just five minute walk from the terminal. You're coming right through to check in, through to security. There are no queues. It's a local, regional, but international airport. For US citizens, you actually clear US emigration and customs here. So when you get back into the US, you're like a domestic passenger. Your bags are sorted, you've no worries, you've no long queues in the US. So if you're coming to Ireland, pick Shannon. So now I'd like to introduce you to Andrew Murphy, our Chief Commercial Officer at Shannon Group. Hi, my name is Andrew Murphy. Welcome to Shannon Airport, the heart of the Wild Atlantic Way. Some great accessible points for you as uh, golfers to Lynx golf courses, 
and all our tourist attractions right on your doorstep. The Shannon Group Arms, the Shannon Airport, Shannon Heritage Business, which is all our castles, all in the locality, and also we have a property business looking to attract inward investment into the country. It's great to be here in the heart of the Wild Atlantic Way. We look forward to you visiting us sometime soon. Shannon Airport is only one hour from Galway City of the tribes and an hour and a bit to the beautiful Kingdom of Kerry. And contrary to what you may have heard, it's not a long way to Tipperary. So come and visit Shannon. Hello, my name is John Ruddle, Chief Executive of Shannon Heritage. I'm here to welcome you all to the Shannon region. We hope all your viewers would like to come and sample what we have in the Shannon region. We have a lot of castles, we have a lot of entertainment. We've really got everything for everybody. One of the biggest and most significant is Bunratty Castle and Folk Park. The castle dates back to 1425. It's a fantastic medieval castle with about 400 original artifacts from the 15th and 16th century. So it's very, very interesting to see. And then round the castle extends out for about 30 acres of folk park. And this folk park takes you back about 150 years in time. And it really dates right back to the famine times. And it gives you an idea of how people lived in those days. In the evening times at Bunratty, every night we have the medieval banquet. And the medieval banquet, again, it's just set in the perfect setting of the castle, the, the, the 14th, 15th century castle. And uh, you get a four course meal with uh, fantastic entertainment. Uh, the entertainment is consistent with the date of the castle. So it's all traditional and uh, medieval music. So we're celebrating 50 years at the moment. Uh, so it's probably one of the longest running, most successful entertainment venues in Europe. Also in what's called the Corn Barn at Bonratty Folk Park, do what's called a traditional Irish evening. And it's an evening of song and dance and stories about, about emigration and about the famine and about all of those really important issues for Ireland. So again, you get four course meal uh, and entertainment for the evening. We run that every night from April through to October. The medieval banquets run actually all year round. Just down the road in Limerick City, we've got the King John's Castle, dates back 800 years. You get the whole story of those 800 years told in a very, very interesting way. We've got all sorts of different interpretive techniques used from looking at the old archaeology and what was dug up uh, in the early 1990s. The exhibition takes you through all of those years and the turbulent times of the castle, particularly around the 1600s and the sieges at the castle and tells you all the gory details about that. Uh, and then after the exhibition, you can actually go out into the original courtyard of the castle and enjoy that experience today. The attractions I've mentioned are all on the Shannon Heritage website www.shannonheritage.com Go in through Shannon Airport and you'll find yourself right in the heart of something that's really, really, truly magical. It's no secret that the Ashford Castle is one of the premier luxury hotels in Ireland. And for those of you who love to stay at a golf resort, or have access to trout and salmon fishing through your hotel, or go horseback riding in beautiful scenery, or experience falconry close up with the birds of prey, the Ashford Castle will be your choice. Cade Miller Falcha, 100,000 welcomes from Ashford Castle. We're a beautiful medieval castle built in 1228. We opened our doors in 1939 as a, as a hotel, so we're celebrating 75 years this year. In Red Carnation and Ashford Castle, we have, we have a motto, uh, no request too large and no detail too small. And this can be seen throughout all of these bedrooms with all the little tiny touches, that uh, tiny noticeable touches that, that, that we have. And, and each room has its own personality. It's, it's unique with, the, with half tester and full tester beds. There's bespoke carpets, there's plush toweling, monogrammed marble uh, with the Ashford Castle crest. We have beautiful oak furniture, uh, lovely soft ecru silk uh, walls, and we're extremely proud of them. That attention to detail can be seen throughout the castle from, from the various rooms that we have so lovingly restored, from our, our beautiful sun lounge to the, the magnificent George V dining room to the, the conic room, which we're standing in now, where we do our, our traditional Lady and Lord Ardell on uh, afternoon tea, which is really popular amongst our guests and uh, served with the finest china, gleaming silver, truly magnificent with beautiful views out to Loch Corrib as well. Speaking of the, the exteriors of the castle, the estate is 365 uh, acres. Uh, we include uh, our, our beautiful golf course, which is very leisurely. Also, we have our School of Falconry, Ireland's first School of Falconry, where you can fly uh, Harris Hawks. 
That's one of the important things with a bird of prey. You don't fly Millie when she's hungry. When she's hungry, she knows where there's food. The Ashford Castle's Falconry School teaches you so much about the Harris Hawk and birds of prey. Millie seems to have taken a real liking to Mark. Uh, you can head down to the equestrian center and and pick up some some ponies and and ride on the on the on the grounds. Fishing is very popular on the estate. We have a, we have a rule here that you have to bring your your fish in, and our and our chef will cook it for you that evening if you, if you, if you catch a, a fish. I'm a fishing guide, which is in Ireland called a ghillie, and uh, I bring people on Loch Corrib mainly out here for uh, brown trout and some salmon. If you happen to be in Ireland and want some great fishing, you can come here to Ashford Castle and we'll try and get some big ones for you. For myself and the whole team here at Ashford, I look forward to welcoming you in the future. It is said in uh, the profession of golf design that uh, one's personality comes out in the, the courses you create. And in uh, Braid's case, he was a marvellous man, a friendly man uh, with a nice sense of humour and I immaculate manners. And really, that's come out in his courses. They're all full of good fun. And uh, I think that perhaps what stamps the Braid courses is worth finding and following and playing on. At least that's how I find it. James Braid wasn't known for his travel. He was a Scotsman, spent most of his time in England and Scotland. But he did get over to Ireland, and he has a great course over there, Mullingar. Let's take a look. A very warm welcome to Mullingar Golf Club in County Westmead, the heart of Ireland. Mullingar is one of the premier parkland courses in the country an 18-hole championship course designed and laid out by James Braid and home to the Mullingar Scratch Trophy, the premier 72-hole stroke play event for Irish amateur golfers played each year on this magnificent course. Previous winners have included Joe Carr, Pori Carrington, Darren Clark, the current Ryder Cup captain Paul McGinley and the current Open champion Rory McIlroy. Mullingar Golf Club is located just one hour from Dublin Airport, and we are delighted to welcome visitors from all over the world. We are renowned for our hospitality, and you may book a tea time simply by contacting our website. We will be delighted to extend a very, very warm Mullingar welcome to you and your friends when you come to play our magnificent course. What a course this is. A classic James Braid layout that's perfectly maintained from tea to green. If you love the thought of playing great parkland golf, designed by five-time Open champion James Braid, respected for his golf, his design, and being a gentleman. If you enjoy playing a James Braid course, Mullingar is the jewel in the crown. Can't be missed. In the clubhouse, you'll find warm, comfortable Irish hospitality, eager to serve great food and drink. Mullingar Golf Club, a championship James Braid experience. Thanks for being with us on Golfing Country. I hope you enjoyed the show. And if you get a chance to get over to Ireland, I'm sure you'll enjoy yourself just as much as we did. See you next time.